Halleluja. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> praise God, praise God, praise God. Halleluja. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, hi Ruth, thank you. Hallelujah. Hi Laura. Good afternoon, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is our first session basically on um, sort of the, the Christian answer. We want to bring a Christian answer to everything that's happening, including COVID-19 and uh, all, all the issues around it basically. And um, for me, I really want us to pray. Um, it's really, really the basic of what we're doing is prayer. Um, I realize there are a lot of people who are struggling at the moment and um, with many, many issues. A lot of people are looking for answers. And um, by the grace of God, we will be able to help. Not just give answers, but direct people so that they might be thoroughly healed, completely healed, completely set free from fear, anxiety, worries, and all the issues that surrounds these times that we have now, these difficult and challenging times, amen? And that's what we're going to be talking about. So I just want to pray. Um, actually, I just have my Bible in front of me here. And... Um, I just want to read a scripture and then I want to pray. So the scripture in John chapter 1, I'm going to read the scripture in John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Verse 2, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, Jesus, Him, without Him, nothing was made that was made. So, in him was life, and the life was the light of the world. Amen? Verse 5. No, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend or understand the light. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John the Baptist. John? This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness to the light. Verse 9. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. We've been talking about light, light, light. God is light. Jesus is light. What is the purpose of light? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for my people right now. For those who will be watching this video now or after, that they will have a divine understanding in the name of Jesus. That they will understand the difference between darkness and light. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that people will be set free. Those who will be called to tune in to watch this video and those will be sharing and those that God will open their spiritual eyes and understanding that they will come to the light. In the name of Jesus, shine upon them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You see, we've been talking about light from John chapter, chapter 1, verse. I'm reading verse 9. That was the, the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Verse 10. He was in the world and the world was not made was made through him but the world did not know him verse 11 He came to his own the Jewish people and the, his own and his own did not receive him they rejected him Verse 12 this is what I'm going to to all of you who will be watching and listening 
verse 12, but as many as received Jesus, as many as received him, he gave them the power, the right to become children of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Verse 12, but as many as received him, when you receive Christ, when you receive him, you receive him who sent him. When you receive Jesus Christ, you receive God at the same time in the name of Jesus. And you get filled with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So we can pray together. So we can pray together in the name of Jesus. With the power of the whole entire universe praying and interceding for you. That's the power of prayer. The power of prayer is not in prayer itself. The power of prayer is in whom we're praying to. You're praying to God in the name that has been authorized. You can't just pray for praying sake. You have to pray in the name that has been authorized by God. And, he's in the, and you're only praying to God. You, have, you can't have direct access to God just by anyhow. You got to have direct access to God by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse, verse 13. Who were born not of the flesh, not of, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, but not the will of man, but the will of God. You have to be born of the will of God. You have to be born of the spirit of God. Because the battle that we are in, whether it's COVID-19 or any other battle, demonic battle, the battle is spiritual. The battle is spiritual. It's not flesh and blood. It's not human battle. It's spirit against spirit, fighting, arguing. So you got to be in the spirit to be able to wrestle in the spirit. You got to be in the spirit to understand the power of prayer. Prayer works because of God who is faithful. Prayer works so we pray to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the name of Jesus has been authorized. He is the one who died for you. He is the one who paid the price for you. He is the one who understand anything that you are going through. Yes, he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we say prayer works, but there are spiritual principles and spiritual laws. It's all spiritual. You are a spirit living in the body. This body is a house. It's a temple. It's housing me. The real Joseph is not what you see. Even though it's a bit, there's no more hair there. The real Joseph is not what you see. The real Joseph is the spirit that is in me that speaks to you. We're communicating spirit against spirit. Spirit with spirit. The spirit needs the body to live in. Amen. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray. But it's good for you to understand the power of prayer. The power of prayer is not in saying words. The power of prayer is in whom we pray to. God is all powerful. And he has set an order on how to pray. And how to get to him through prayer. Prayer must be rooted in the word of God. You, you know, we're not just praying, saying words. We're saying things. We're speaking the vocabulary of God. Prayer is connected. Prayer is connecting with God. Prayer is fellowshipping with God. Prayer is a communication with God where you speak to him and he answers back to you. 
Prayer is not a one-way communication. Prayer is a communication with God. Prayer is communing with God. Prayer is being one with God. Prayer is intimacy with God. So you set yourself, you create an environment that, it, that is conducive to you praying with God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, he says, when you pray, go into your room. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. When you pray, go into your room. When you have shut the door, your father, who is in a secret place in your room, will hear you. Prayer is intimacy with God. Prayer is communication with God. And when you pray in the name of Jesus, the name that has been authorized, God hears your prayer. God can never say no to Jesus. If you pray in the name of Jesus, God will not say no to you. He will answer your prayer. But he will answer your prayer according to his will. Because Jesus Christ is interceding for you. Jesus Christ, his blood is covering you. Jesus Christ is interceding for you. Amen. So when you pray, mean it. Speak from your heart. Don't do any religious prayer. There's no such a thing as religious prayer. God don't hear the words. He hears your heart. God hears your heart. It's not by the words that you speak only. So I said, we pray to the Father in the name that has been authorized. The name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2. The name of Jesus Christ has power in heaven and earth and on earth to have access, to give you direct access to God. God hears and answers prayers according to his will. I repeat that. God hears and answers prayers according to his will. But you must be in the family of God. You must be in the spirit of God so that when you communicate with him, you know when he gives you the answer. Some people pray and they don't even know whether they got the answer or not. Hallelujah. So the prayer must be rooted in the word of God. For, the, for your life to be in the prayer with God, as you are in the prayer of God with God, in intimacy with God, there must be a renunciation of the things that hinders your prayers. There must be a repentance, a change of heart, a change of mind that hinders your prayer life. You must renounce the things that blocks your life. You must renounce the things that stops you from having intimacy with God. You must renounce on the things of the past. You must embrace God. You must embrace Him. You must be able, by the grace of God and the power of God, you must renounce your past. You must embrace God. You must embrace Jesus Totally. Prayer works in agreement. Prayer works in agreement with God. Prayer don't work in the air. Prayer works in agreement with God. That's why it's a communication with God in the Holy Spirit. We just don't pray to pray. We pray knowing that God hears us. And that's the confidence we have. So as we're going to pray for anybody struggling, for the things, the COVID-19, all of those pandemics, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before you in the name that is authorized, in the name of Jesus, to pray, to intercede for those who will be watching this video, for those who believe, I pray in the name of Jesus that you protect them from COVID-19, from, from any pandemic. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your blood cover them, them and their families. Let your, their houses be protected. By faith, we put the blood of Jesus on the doorpost so that when the angel of death comes, he will pass over because the house is secure in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, I'll read it for you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. It says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Verse 5 first, verse 5. Be content with such things as you have, as you have. For he himself said, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God promises he will never leave you nor forsake you. You, your children, your grandchildren, your house, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Your sin might separate you from God, but he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? He will never forsake you. That's his promise. Verse 6. So we, might, we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is your helper. The Lord is your helper. You will not fear. Sorry. Sorry, George, you can come off. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it was my brother who was uh, entering. Okay. Their friends won't be watch, able to watch this video unless they are, you're selected. Sorry, I just had to add a friend of mine who just joined us, basically. Thank you for your patience. So we're going to continue. I'm just going to do this quickly. Hallelujah. By the way, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate that. Um, and my prayer is that something positive come out of this. Amen. So we're going to continue. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, everybody. So I'm just going to continue. I think Georgie is part of it now. I think he has joined us. I'm trying to get used to this technology as well. It's not easy. But thank you for your patience. So we're going to continue. I was saying to you that... Um, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, I thank you that you came that Jesus came to die for our sins, past, present, and future. That he might be one with us. That he might identify with us. That he might relate to us. That his blood will cover us, will cover me and my family, will cover my brothers and sisters and their family. That your, the blood of Jesus will cover you, will protect you. The blood of Jesus will be there for you. He will cleanse you. He will protect you from everything, from any pandemic for any demonic activity, the blood of Jesus will protect you because the blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything on this earth. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus says, 
the Bible says, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. If your confidence is in Jesus, let me tell you today, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. No pandemic will touch you. No COVID-19 will touch you because my God will protect you in this season. My God will help you in this season. Let your confidence be that Jesus loves you enough to die for you, enough to protect you, enough for anything that will happen to you, that will come against you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So we may say boldly, hallelujah, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. The Lord is my helper. Hallelujah. He, I will not fear. What can man do to me? What can any pandemic do to me? What can anybody do to me? The Lord is my helper. He was the one who rescued me. There's nothing that can happen to you except God allows it because you are a child of God. In the name of Jesus, you are protected by the almighty God. No panic, no fear, no worry, no anxiety. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every demonic activity upon, upon your life in the name of Jesus. We cast out any demons that try and even come anywhere near you in the name of Jesus. I pray for your family to be protected in the name of Jesus. That your mind, your heart will be protected and guard in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall come against you in the name of Jesus. Every weapon formed against you will not prosper, will not touch you in the name of Jesus because you are covered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue. I have no scriptures here. I just want to tell you, we're going to stay in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, I want you to know that Jesus sympathizes with everything you're going through. Jesus loves you enough. He died for you. He understands what you're going through. He's not far from you. And we're going to pray this scripture. Remember, I said prayer is rooted in the scripture. Prayer is rooted in the scriptures. We don't pray in the air. We pray using the language of God himself. We pray using what he said to us because his word goes back to him and he recognizes his word. I repeat that. When you pray and you pray God's words back to him, he recognizes what he has said. Amen. When you say to God what he has said, he recognizes that and guess what? He joined with you and he does what he needs to do for you. So in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, sorry. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through, a high priest is the one who intercedes. A high priest is the one who prays for you when you don't know what to pray. Have you ever had that time where you, you don't really, you, you go in your closet, you go in your bedroom and you don't know what to say? You don't know what to do? You don't know how to pray? Jesus is your high priest. The Holy Spirit intercedes for you in the name that has been authorized. Remember we said, we pray to God in the name of Jesus. We pray to God in the name that God has authorized. Amen. <clears throat> That's why we say in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So as you pray in the name of Jesus, in Philippians chapter 2, that's a name that God authorized. And he said, this is the name. But when you say in the name of Jesus, you're calling all the power of heaven and earth because all authority, all the power has been given to the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And that's why we pray in his name. That's why we say amen. It means we agree. That's why I said prayer is a communication and prayer is an agreement. 
It's hard to pray to God if you don't know him. It's hard to pray to somebody you don't know. It's hard to pray to somebody you don't have a relationship with. Hallelujah. So in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast our confession. Don't give up. Don't quit. Hold fast your confession. Don't give up. Don't quit. No matter what you're going through, no matter issues of life, family issue, work issue, COVID-19, financial issue, don't give up. Don't quit. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So we hold fast, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, hallelujah, who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all point tempted as we are without sin. Every temptation you're going through, Jesus was tempted. That's why he can sympathize with you. You see, we don't do religion here. We do relationship. We do reality. Jesus knows you. He can sympathize with you. And everything you're going through, he has gone through it and he knows it. And that's what the verse says. <coughs> it says, for we do not have a high priest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all point tempted as we are without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What you and not we need is grace. So we run to God who is our grace. So grace of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes into your life, the grace of God takes you on because the grace of God is the power of God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your grace to abound in my friends and my people who are watching this video. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, touch them right now with your grace. Touch them right now. Equip them with your power that they will have security in you. That they will know there's only you who can secure them. Secure their mind. Guards their heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of fear. We rebuke the spirit of doubt. We rebuke the spirit of anxiety. We rebuke the spirit of infirmities. The same way Jesus touched the lepers, the leper, the same way we can touch people the same way. We don't have to social distance. We can touch our people because we have the power of God in our lives. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You don't need to social distance because prayer is essential. God touches. Jesus touched the leper. Did Jesus touch anybody who was possessed with demons and they, cast, it was, they were cast out? In the name of Jesus. So, in summary, I read this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all point tempted as we are, yet without sin. Amen? So whatever Jesus went through, he was tempted so he can relate to you. He's not far from you. He knows you. He knows what you're going through. But you need to turn to him and speak to him about it. Have a conversation with Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's what you call prayer. Amen. 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 So we're going to read another uh, verse in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. You see, when we pray to God. Yes, Sister Ruth, we have the power and authority because Jesus is in us. And that's where our boldness and confidence come from. Because we know 
He that is in us is greater than any powers in the world. And that gives us confidence to go out and stand and shine in the name of Jesus. So in Matthew chapter 8, verse 2, In Matthew chapter 8, verse 2, when he had come down from the mountain, a great multitude followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hallelujah. Somebody with leprosy came to Jesus and said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Listen to the answer of Jesus. Matthew chapter, chapter 8, verse 3. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your divine touch upon your people right now. Father, I pray, touch them in the name of Jesus, that the COVID-19 will go in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, give us that confidence and that boldness that we can touch anyone, anyone who comes, anyone who's willing to be changed, anyone that you will touch them, that they will change, that they will be healed and be restored because not my power, but the power that is in your name, Lord Jesus. Like you touched the leper and he was healed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And immediately, the leprosy, his leprosy was cleansed. And that's what Jesus can do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to read um, in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. You see, I was saying to you at the beginning, everything is spiritual. The battle is spiritual. Amen. So you cannot fight spirit with flesh. You have to fight spirit with spirit. The spirit will recognize who's with you. The spirit will recognize Jesus in you. In Mark chapter 1, this is what happened. I'm going to read Mark chapter 1 from verse 21. Then they, then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered a synagogue and taught. Verse 22, Mark chapter 1, verse 22. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. Whenever you read the word of God, God gives the authority because you use in the name of Jesus that has been given all authority and all powers in heaven and on earth. The name of Jesus is the power that you use and that's the one that God has enthroned. God has given the ancient of day, has enthroned, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is the one that we use. He is the one who works in us and he is the one that the Father listened to straight away. So in Mark chapter one, verse 23, now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, a man in a synagogue, a man in a church, a man in a place filled with unclean spirit. And people are powerless to cast that spirit out. So Jesus had to come. Not everybody in your church is clean. Not, every, not anybody in your church is clean. Not everybody in your church is clean. There are people in your church building that have wicked spirits and they need your help. They need you to pray for them. They need you to do whatever it takes. That's why you and I watch the secret. This is the secret of the spiritual battle here. Matthew chapter 1, Mark, Mark chapter 1 verse 24. So these unclean spirits came out crying and saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come and destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Hallelujah. That's the secret. 
the demons recognize holiness. I know who you are, Ruth. You holy man of God. You holy woman of God. I know you who you are, Angela. You holy woman of God. I know who you are, Karen. You holy woman of God. Whenever the demon sees holiness in you, they will flee. There's no fight. There's no fight. What is Jesus? Jesus is in you. So listen to the confession of the demons. <coughs> they cry out, verse, 40, verse 24, Mark 1, 24, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? He came to destroy. Hallelujah. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The demons know the holiness in you. The demons know who's with you. They will know. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my people to be sanctified, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray that anything concerning any problems in this life, Father, in the name of Jesus, fill them with the Holy Spirit, that even demonic spirit will recognize that they can't touch them. Even demonic spirit will recognize that they're untouchable because he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Father, fill us with your, the love of your son. Fill us with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. It is enough for us. It is enough for us. We need you, Lord. We need you in this battle. We need you. Demonic, not the Holy Spirit. They will flee from you because of the holiness that is in your life. That's why one of the key to answering prayer is that we need to repent one of the keys to answering prayer, we need to let go of the past. One of the keys to answering prayers in our lives is that we need to let go of the things that hinders our prayer life. Let go of the bitterness. Let go of the anger. Let go of all those things that breaks your heart. Let them go in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus break the curse upon your life. May the blood of Jesus break the generational curse upon your life because you are in Christ and in Christ you are sanctified. And in Christ you are regenerated. And in Christ you are a new person. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. You are a new person in Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Mark chapter 1 verse 25. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit saying, be quiet and come out of them. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There's no fight between us and the demons. No. There's no fight. We say, be quiet and come out. In the name of Jesus, be quiet and come out. You're praying from the position of strength. When you pray, you don't pray from a weaker position. For you are seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 3. It says you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when you pray, you're not coming from the bottom up. You're praying from a, a position of strength. So you can say to any demonic activity in your life, be gone in the name of Jesus. That's what Jesus said. And if Jesus is in you, that's your confession. Your confession is not to fight. Demons love to fight. Your confession is not to argue. Demons love to argue. Every unstable people like to argue. They argue with you about everything. They will argue with you day and night. Demons don't mind arguing with you. Demons don't mind power. Demons don't mind fighting. You don't need to fight with them. You have the greater one in you. So when you say in the name of Jesus, be gone. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said to the, Jesus said to the demons in Mark chapter 1, verse 25, shut up. Say to that negative voice, shut up. Say to that demonic attack, shut up. Hallelujah. 
say to them, shut up. You have no communication with evil spirit. Have no communication with any unfamiliar spirit. Have nothing to do with them. Live in Christ. Abide in Christ and you will be devil proof. Abide in Christ, you will be demon proof. Abide in Christ, the blood of Jesus will cover you outwardly and inwardly. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You're not praying like a weak person because you have a high priest, Jesus Christ, who intercedes for you. Who do you think you are? You are a beautiful, amazing child of God. May God answer your prayers today in the name of Jesus. May God answer the prayers for your loved ones in the name of Jesus. May you come boldly to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Your, may your life be changed in the name of Jesus. May you renounce all the evil in the name of Jesus. Repent from all the evil in the name of Jesus. Repent from bitterness in the name of Jesus. Repent. Turn away from all those things because these are all hooks of the enemy. Repent. Turn away. Turn away from all those things because these are hooks that the enemy has. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12. This is probably the last scripture and then we, we're going to close. I can go on. I can go on, brothers. I can go on. You see, my confidence is not in me. My confidence is in the scriptures. It's in the Holy Spirit. That should be your confidence. And that's what we're going to move on with. Hallelujah. You are not what people say you are. You are who God says you are. I repeat that. You are not what people say you are. You are not your past. You are who God says you are now. Amen. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 44. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 44. I'm going to read from verse 43 first. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and find none. When an unclean spirit is cast out of you, it goes into the desert, it goes in different places to find rest and find nothing. Unclean spirit cannot find rest. They need to uh, inhabit people. They need to possess people who can relate to them. Verse 44. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes and find it empty, swept and put in order. Hallelujah. When Jesus puts you in order, he cleanses your house. The Holy Spirit begins to cleanse you, cleanse your past, give you a new future, move into your life, and work in you and help you. He wants to stay in you. You cannot stay without the Holy Spirit. You can do nothing without the Holy Spirit because the unclean spirit, the demonic spirit, will come back. The one who was cast out will come back. And when he comes back, you bring seven other stronger demonic attack that will come back at you and they will not let you go because you left your house empty. So my prayer tonight for you, my brother, my prayer tonight for you, my sister, is to know that he that is in you, Jesus Christ, is greater than he that is in the world, the demonic spirit. You are not subject to demonic spirit. They cannot touch you if the Holy Spirit of God is in you. When the Holy Spirit of God is in you, no, demon, no demonic spirit can touch you. You can never be possessed by a demonic spirit if you have the Spirit of God in you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't leave it empty. Don't leave it empty. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. 
Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Ask God to fill with the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, you said if we ask the Holy Spirit, you will give us the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, as your people renounce the wickedness, as your people renounce the evil, as your people renounce the sin and they turn to you. Father, you say in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, we have to ask the Holy Spirit and you will give us the Holy Spirit who will stay with us because we don't want any demonic spirit coming to stay with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every name, we pray, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Like you said in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, that we might be filled and that we might walk in obedience to you. In the name of Jesus. Don't leave your house empty. Fill your house with the Holy Spirit. Don't try and reason. Believe. 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 Believe God. He will save you. Believe God. He will save you from COVID-19. Nothing can prevail in your life except the Holy Spirit who will take over your life. He will protect you, you and your families and your children. Develop a prayer life. Develop a prayer life based on the word of God. All I have in front of me is the word of God. You read the word of God. You believe the word of God. You tell God about his word. As you communicate to him, he recognizes his word and he will answer the prayer according to his will. Ask the Holy Spirit today. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit of God himself. He will help you. He will equip you. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will restore you back into the family of God. No COVID-19 can touch you. We pray for all the victims of COVID-19. I pray in the name of Jesus today. That those who have suffered, Lord, comfort them. Those who are struggling, Father, in the name of Jesus, be with them. Those who are alone, Father, tell them they might feel alone, but you are with them. For you promise in your word, you will never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, for those who are suffering today, we relate and we identify. Please come for them, Lord. Touch them. For, the, for those who have no fathers, you are a father to a fatherless. For those who are widow, you are a husband to the widow. Oh, Father, my dear Father, my God and my Savior, rescue your people. Rescue your people. Be merciful to us, sinners. Be merciful to us, my Lord and my God. Help us to be a people set apart, separate for you, Lord. Father, cause us to be holy. Drive the Holy, let the Holy Spirit sanctify us and make us holy. Father, in the name of Jesus, that the enemy will see the holiness of us and they will flee because you are in us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Restore your children. Bring them back home. At the sound of my voice, that they may hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. If any, if, if any of you has any prayer request, please let me know. Let Karen know. Let Ruth know. Drop us a message. We will be able to help and assist you. This forum has been set up for prayers. So sometimes I will be teaching, but it will all be in prayers. Because the prayer is not something separated from God. Prayer is not something we think up in our head. Prayer is according to the will of God with the word of God. I repeat, prayer is according to the will of God with the word of God. Amen. So if anybody has any prayer requests, don't forget to drop them. Yes, Georgie, we pray for Chris and Karen, absolutely. For God to move in their lives, I'll continue to pray. So prayer don't finish here. The reason why I do this publicly is to encourage us. True prayer starts when the door is shut, 
when the camera is off, when I'm in my bedroom, true prayer starts there. Amen. This is just to stir us up, to equip us, to excite us, to motivate us, to motivate us to pray. Prayer starts when the camera goes off. True prayer of intimacy. But I want to encourage you in the name of Jesus. Be strong. I love you and Jesus loves you more. In Jesus' name, amen.